Hello YouTube, I'm Toby. Today we're benchmarking a system I built using um, an FX8300 and a GTX 750Ti. The FX8300 uh, uh, says it has 8, eight cores, but we'll get to that later. Um, it's clocked at 3.3 GHz and it boosts up to 4.2 GHz from what I could find. The architecture in question is the uh, pile driver architecture, which was a revision of the bulldozer architecture. From what I can see, it's a 32 man, uh, nanometer node. The TDP for this chip is 95 watts, so it does get a little toasty, um, but I've got a beefy cooler on it, so it shouldn't be an issue. For this test, I'll not be overclocking the CPU, I'll be running stock. For RAM, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR3. I really can't for the life of me right now remember what it's clocked at, but I will leave that somewhere on screen. As I stated earlier, um, this is a ASUS GTX 750Ti. Uh, it's fairly old and I'm curious to see uh, how well it stacks up today. The rest of the system is just a bunch of parts I found. We have an SSD in here, it's 120 gigabytes, and that will be all we'll be using. There will be no hard disk in this uh, system. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the AMD FX uh, architecture. Now, AMD claims that this is a 8 core processor but the way the cores work on this um, in this architecture um, the CPU is built up into modules there are four modules um, and each module holds two cores however the issue here is that the cores within the modules share some uh, resources I believe they share the floating point unit and this effectually means that the module itself operates like a true core and the cores themselves within the module acts more like threads. I mean, this is why Cinebench sees this particular processor as a quad-core processor with eight threads. And AMD has been sued over this. I believe there is, I can't believe it's, I can't remember it's ongoing or it's been resolved the uh, lawsuit in uh, California. Now we've got all the boring parts of the video out of the way, so why don't we go ahead and look at some benchmarks.
very well. The benchmarks are complete and I have to say I'm actually quite um, surprised with the um, performance of this processor. I've been working with the FX 4200 and the 6300 and they didn't really perform that well. However, I think the 8300 actually performed quite well. Uh, maybe that's just because it's got that well additional cord or module to the 6300 but I'm surprised in a, in a good way about the um, the way this processor worked. Now I in no way recommend you go out and buy an FX CPU this was just to satisfy my own curiosity. I think you might be a little happier with the Ryzen processor than an FX CPU. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.